Hello everybody, welcome to this week's Life on the Holes. If you remember last week, Ross started to build the frame for our saloon couch. Before I get to do the fun bit of choosing the foam and the material to cover the couch, we're going to give you a sneak preview of the end result and I hope you agree with me that it looks pretty damn good. But before we get there, Ross has got a lot of work to do. Right, uh, before Peter takes away our lounge suite frames, I'm going to actually just douse it and cover it in wax polyester. So basically like a finishing resin. I was going to put epoxy on it, but uh, I really think that'd just be a waste of money. It's going to be three times cheaper to put polyester, wax polyester on it. This is probably never going to see any moisture, but because it's in a marine environment, I just don't want the frame to degrade. And certainly I don't want any moisture getting into the wood around the foam and the upholstery. So I'll just cover the whole thing and that way it's sealed. He can just do what he likes then and you can basically finish it. But I've given it a bit of a rough sand up. He can tidy up some of these edges if he needs to, but I really don't think so. I think this is gonna be more than adequate for the, uh, for the upholsterer and basically covering it all is just gonna be a simple, you know, just a preventative treatment rather than anything that really needs to be done. But you just never know on a boat. You never know when that moisture in the tropics gets into upholstery. And uh, yeah, it can basically very, very easily degrade your framework. And then we're going to be up for the cost again. All right, so I've got some wax in styrene. Uh, it's about 5% mix in that polyester. Just simply a matter of brush it on all the surfaces. You're basically just sealing the plywood. You're not going to be laminating anything onto it. Hence the wax. The wax rises to the surface and that's generally considered a finishing resin uh, without the wax in it it will remain tacky for you know forever until such time as we come to laminate another substrate onto it but you know in this case we're just basically going to wet out all the timber to make sure that it's all generally pretty well sealed um, to avoid any moisture getting into it all right, that is now done, fully saturated with uh, waxed polyester, and I'll guarantee that that is never gonna rot. Man, are we having a storm. Oh, the last uh, 18 hours, we have had 400 millimeters of rain. That is a shitload of rain, and this storm has been going on for about two and a half hours. This one, wow, it's been cracking right overhead, and uh, yeah, a bit worried about my doggy at home. She's probably stressing out. I think hopefully Janet's at home with her. So while I'm here, I lost power about half an hour ago because of the storm, but I'm working on the drains here in this hatchy, and I figured I may as well get it done. I've done all of the surrounds and the lip, the, uh, the drip line uh, seal I've put on there as well. And essentially I've built these drains again, just like I did with these other ones over here. And essentially, what I've been able to do is just get this all fabricated all in one day and then put it all in and then tomorrow I can come in and start to laminate it in. It's pretty easy once you get the drains in place, but they're basically going to fit up underneath here. They intersect like that and sit up underneath like so. And at the same time, I've got, I've got a face plate which goes on Last time I put the drains in and then put the faceplate on, I've already slathered that with epoxy and I'm going to install that first. So the whole thing is going to be done by tomorrow. I'll basically have it at the same level as the other ones and then I can just come in and finish up everything in one hit. The ones over here have actually come up so well. Um, but the problem is now that I put a drip line on the actual hatch itself, I've got to adjust the drip line to match onto the drains. But yeah, check that out. That's, that's all hand fabricated foam core. It's not that hard to do and super, super light. I mean, really, uh, it's just totally changed the whole back of this boat now, having these larger hatches, and this is gonna make for very, very useful storage and easy to get items in. Well, the only problem now is that because I've put those drip line edges on the edge of the hatches there, I've now gotta shape them to fit the bloody, the, uh, the drains themselves. But yeah, anyway, for now, I'll just get on with this guy here, get this finished, and I'm gonna head home because uh, this storm is not gonna abate. We're probably anticipating a lot more rain tonight. So this gel coat sheet 
basically is going to be laminated back to the actual wall and I've already slathered some epoxy on in there so I'm hoping I can get this in without making too much mess. It's all like Lego until you blast it all together. It's nothing, <laughs> nothing more fun for a young bloke like me. He used to love his Lego to construct stuff and then make it good. Whereas Lego looks good the minute you put it together. This usually takes months to get finished. But for now, Oh, that got really messy very fast. So I've got all manner of clamps and jigs and bloody wedges and stuff shoved up in there. Please, guys, trust me, that is going to look fantastic in a couple of days. But uh, they never look good until I get in and do all the detailed sanding. So this morning I got here after oh, the biggest storm I think we've had for years. And I thought, oh, it's going to be a bit messy. There'll be a couple of things blown over. The cockpit here was an inch deep in water. And that's blown in through my tent. You can imagine how much to get an inch of water to blow in from that into here. And this whole cockpit all from about here would have been an inch deep in water. So I'm gonna to have to drill some holes. I think I've actually got some drains coming, some scupper drains for the floor here. And they're gonna go there in that corner and another one down in there. And I'm actually thinking seriously about putting another one here and potentially another one over there because there's a couple of sort of damming points and uh, we don't want that. Now, proof that my new drains work. These guys, although the boat, it hasn't totally drained yet, but look at this, there's no water in the hatches, but there's water in here. So maybe I didn't put them downhill enough. <laughs> I didn't get the gradient quite right, but at least it didn't go in the hatch and that was very very pleasing so i left these hatches here last night closed up even though i can't shut them properly yet because i've got to sort out the, the drip line the drain worked and all the water landed in there on the top of that uh, lounge suite area actually flowed down into the cockpit it's always a good sign when your drains work and down in here it's not really much of a hatch but it will suffice for storing drinks and just get it ready for laminating i've already sanded around the margins here and basically you just do a layer of 400 double bias in and around the channel and then a layer of surfboard cloth peel ply it and then it's ready for fairing and for paint. All right, I've got a lot of other stuff going on here. I've got the hatch from the back step still here and this drip line is causing me some concern because they don't fit properly because of the hinges, but I do have to shave these back. Ultimately, you only really want the drip line on the outside, so I might end up doing a bit of a 45 degree bevel there and then re-glassing. And I'm waiting on the lounge suite frame that I've built there. It's up in the factory, just waiting for that uh, polyester and wax polyester to go off. Oh, I think Peter's coming tomorrow to check out the upholstering. Tomorrow I'm gonna make some bases out here, here and here that's going to basically fit the, uh, the the bottom part of the cushion and that'll actually be three sections as well. And I'll be able to put a hoop to act as a locator for those access hatches.
yesterday I repaired all of the voids in the edges of these davits and they were basically filled with solid epoxy all the way through a thickened epoxy so I filled all the foam the problem was they were never ever glassed it was only ever painted over with gel coat so these need to be glassed so what I need to do now is basically sand back probably about 40 millimeters so that we can wrap glass all the way around all of the edges of the davits and I'm going to wrap two layers of glass around them and finish them and then we're going to respray them fair them and respray them so that they look like they're complete and all one piece now they are actually foam core with solid glass so unfortunately whoever made them and when they were made they thought it was good enough just to have a sandwich with foam we and paint over it and unfortunately we just delaminated over time and obviously there's other stresses involved now i'm going to beef these up with some stainless rod uh, holding them together to stop them from moving side to side and that's what these holes here are for and also up here we've got a 25 mil tube in between the two davits but for now they just need to be trimmed off i need to get rid of all this gel coat back about 40 millimeters and i can lap two layers of over the top of it peel plight ferret sand it and then get it physically sprayed and do the whole spray job in one hit i'll probably have to suspend these while i spray them because they're going to be a bit awkward to spray to get the flow coat on them and then we can polish them back and make them look like brand new getting a team together is no easy task but when the team's together stuff gets done yeah. well, what's happening here guys oh look at this so we've got the guys working on our davits and doing a great job here we're just finishing them off i spent all yesterday grinding them down got a, quite a bit of carbon in them i found look at this that's carbon unidirectionals in there which is actually a good sign there's quite a, a lot of carbon in these obviously in stressed areas so i'm pretty happy that they've got that in there that means i can sort of go ahead without worrying too much about fatigue but janice just rounding the edges off getting them ready for couple of layers of uh, 475 double bias over the top and then we're going to re-spray them all and uh, hopefully make them look like they're brand new and they should look pretty amazing, eh? Check out Ellen's on the cloth cutter. She's discovered, have you discovered the scissors or the electric ones? Yeah, okay. I've also discovered that your measurements are lopsided. On here, these lines go like this. No, no. Oh, okay. Sorry, Mum. <laughs> I'm outing you. Oh, that's like a bloody production line this place at the moment and they're capping the edge yeah, they're doing a great job guys Thanks, yeah we've got uh 475 double bias going on how many layers one huh? one layer and then a layer of surfboard cloth so just to basically finish and cap it and then we're going to fair and paint but yeah we'll be uh we'll be fairing these on the weekend i think that's awesome it's a cathartic job isn't it Everything about this is cathartic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the guys have gone home three hours ago, I'll mind you. I've still got another davit to be done over there, but I'll just check out their work. Uh, Ellen had a bit of a go at laminating today, and Ellen actually helped me laminate the first two tie layers on the deck, so it was pretty full on, but we've done... Well, they've done a pretty nice job tying in the edges of these davits and you know the great thing is now i can essentially just give them a good fairing compound and then spray these up and they'll look like brand new and in fact i think they're probably stronger than they were uh given that i've now tied in those edges and enclosed them to minimize any chance of any water getting in pretty happy that uh, leopard did this on there i think it's off a 43 these davits it might be off a 40 i'm not sure but yeah they have that carbon unis in these is uh is actually very pleasing i was going to actually install some carbon just for the the cross piece down at the bottom here but no, no need to it's already done for me and uh that's a really good result janet's back from her sabbatical of study and her assessment for the leading crewman for jervis bay marine rescue so pretty impressive you jan congratulations honey 
Good to see you back though. Needed to needed someone to come and do some work because Ellen came back and got sick. The poor kid, she's had a couple of days off. But uh, Janet's just finishing off our davits. I've already done this one. We've got a nice um, laminated edge now. A couple of layers of 400 on it, which is just fantastic. And it's making it all solid and, uh, and waterproof too, which means it won't obviously get any damage and probably strengthen it a little bit as well. It has been a big week with Ellen returning home and uh, it's good having her in here. She's uh, got a couple of months off and, and quite frankly she offered to help me and God I, I just love working with my kids. Um, the good thing is you can actually show them once and they just get on with it and they don't want to be shown twice. If you show them twice you're in deep trouble but I don't try not to do that too often but uh, sometimes I just I like to keep a a good close eye on, on the goings on in the factory here because uh, you know I just don't want to have to create excess work by not getting something done right and our kids just get straight onto it and they've got no issues with uh, with being shown once and then they're into it and the job's done right every time and you know we might have to do a little bit of clean up afterwards but honestly to get that extra work done is just such a bonus for me when I'm trying to deal with so many different projects on the go at the moment. So what I've done is I've actually got the frame for the dinette module here ready for Pete to come and get the uh, upholstery started but I have to cut some access hatches and one of which is here there's another one here another one over there once it's in I'd like to leave it in but I need to be able to lift these modules out and get to areas in behind here particularly in this one here is going to be the ducting for the air conditioner now what we've done here is we've got a number of conduits here but there will be air conditioning running through this section here and Tomorrow I've got uh, Jimmy, our uh, marine electrician, coming in to install all of my 230 volt stuff and I've installed the AC panel over here on the wall. So this is our, uh, it's an eight position AC panel. This will basically handle all of our AC loads. And the other thing I've done in here is installed all the AC wires and I'll just turn the light on in here for a second. Reconfigured all the AC wires to come along through this cable trunk here. We got all the DC loads going through this one. The AC here, we've kept them separate for a very good reason and I've actually ducted them in behind the major battery loads there. Uh, behind the links distributor there and basically brought them to here so all these hopefully by tomorrow will all be tied into the rear of our AC panel. Now we have BEP AC panel, DC panel here, totally separate and obviously I think they're made in New Zealand but anyway what I've also bought for the AC loads and for that back of that panel is a protective cover and this will be mounted on the back of the AC panel so that no fingers can get involved here. I've actually installed the bus bar here as well and that'll go over the top there. There'll be a couple of lugs here so that no hands can get involved in the 230 volt, 240 volt side of our electrical system. Uh, our earths are going to go over to here to this bus bar and obviously we also need to run DC to here. The 12 volt system also needs to run to here to operate the backlights for our circuit breakers. The other, the other thing I've done too is I've actually installed two 30 amp uh, circuit breakers in the bottom of here. One for the induction cooker and one for our air conditioning system because it draws over 20 amps. So we're basically more than covered here for both of those items. So I've replaced those two. They were only like 15 amp ones and I've moved the 20s up to here and then I think I've got 15s all the way up to the top here. 